This isn't hyperbole. A vote for Donald Trump uh, may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. This is an exaggeration. He's a threat to democracy. This is Donald J. Trump. He was the 45th president of the United States. He caused an insurrection at the Capitol. And sorry to ruin your Christmas, but he's running again. This guy is openly running as a wannabe dictator. Trump said he would terminate the Constitution so he could be president again. Do you know who also did that? Mussolini, Chavez, Pinochet, all of them shelved their constitutions to centralize power. Trump is planning to purge tens of thousands of civil servants and replace them with loyalists. Authoritarian Viktor Orban used the same tactic to dismantle Hungary's democracy. Donald Trump's chances of winning are very real. The alarm is going off. Everyone needs to wake up. We have a choice between protecting our democracy or letting Trump destroy it. It's time to get off the sidelines. We can't let Donald Trump get close to the want to make any comment about this thinking project ad? Yeah, no, I saw it. Trump plan will kill him. And is coming. He thinks he's gone. They should call it the Losers Project. The Lincoln Project is a political organization focused on Trump's defeat. This guy is weird in a bad way. If you look at Martin Luther King, when he uh, did his speech, we actually had more people. Weird in a creepy way. You're going up the escalator? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. Weird in a dangerous way. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote. Just weird. Uh, uh, uh. Don't you find some of this? Too weird to be president. These guys are creepy, and yes, just weird as hell. Let me look. Well, thank you very much, and a very big hello to a place where we've done very well, Sioux Falls. Thank you very much, Sioux Falls. And so, Sioux City, let me ask you. You know, I was very honored as a man. Victor Orban. Did ever, anyone ever hear of him? He's probably like one of the strongest leaders anywhere in the world and he uh he's the leader of right he's the leader of turkey story a quick story you don't mind if i go off teleprompter like a lot do you so much more exciting so much more but the head of hungary a very tough strong guy victor orban did anybody ever hear of him probably you know, considered very powerful, very uh, powerful within his country and outside of his country. Uh, not exactly loved by some of the European nations because he does his thing. He didn't allow millions of people to invade his country. He allowed nobody to invade. The zero, zero. He had nobody. So he doesn't have crime and he doesn't have the problems that they're having in other countries where millions of people are allowed to go in. But they uh, were interviewing him two weeks ago and they said, uh, what would you advise President Obama? The whole world seems to be exploding and imploding. And he said, it's very simple. He should immediately resign and they should replace him with President Trump, who kept the world safe. And I'm not just talking the United States. China respected him. Russia respected him. North Korea respected him, and he used another word other than respect, who he said fear, but I don't want to use that word. Of course, it's probably better than respect if you get right down to it, right? But he said everybody was fine. We had no pro We have none of these problems. You didn't have inflation. You didn't have these problems three years ago. And then you look at this. We had the greatest economy in history. Now we have a mess. You'll end up in the Great Depression. And I'll tell you the one thing I don't want to be, I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. I always said, I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. And the way they're going with their stupid energy policies, you know, you pay the highest in this state. You pay the highest energy costs anywhere in the United States. You know that? Beautiful young daughter. What a beautiful young daughter. And in six states, you're allowed to kill the baby after the baby is born. And you know, one of those states is Minnesota, where this uh, tampon Tim comes from. But she said one thing that got me. She said Kamala has one big advantage. She's a very beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. So I decided to go back and reread the clothes. I'm not saying he's in, but I say that I am much better looking than her. I think I'm much better. I'm a better looking person than Kamala.
No, I couldn't believe it. She said, you know, I had never heard that one. They said, no, her biggest advantage is that she's a beautiful woman. I'm going, huh. I never thought of that. Sure. Here's a longer and more detailed version of the script. The upcoming Florida ballot measure seeks to legalize abortion until fetal viability, a term that is medically defined as the point at which a fetus could potentially survive outside the womb, typically considered around 23 to 24 weeks of pregnancy, or about six months. Fetal viability is an important benchmark in healthcare as it determines when a pregnancy is expected to continue developing normally or when the fetus might survive with medical assistance if born prematurely. This ballot measure has garnered significant attention, particularly from both supporters and opponents of abortion rights. If passed, it would overturn the current restrictions in Florida, including the state's existing six-week abortion ban. This ban, one of the strictest in the country, allows very little time for women to recognize their pregnancy and make a decision, leading to widespread debate and controversy. Recently, former President Donald Trump, a key figure in the Republican Party and a strong influence on conservative policies, found himself at the center of this debate. During an interview with NBC News on Thursday, Trump made comments that sparked outrage among his anti-abortion supporters. When asked whether he would vote in favor of the Florida ballot measure, Trump responded, I am going to be voting that we need more than six weeks, seemingly indicating support for extending the legal time frame for abortions. This statement led to immediate backlash from abortion opponents who typically align with Trump. Many of these supporters believe in strict abortion restrictions and were concerned that Trump's remarks signaled a shift in his stance. The six-week ban, often referred to as a heartbeat bill, has been a key issue for anti-abortion advocates, and any suggestion of loosening it is seen as a betrayal of their cause. In response to the criticism, Trump's campaign quickly moved to clarify his position. They issued a statement asserting that Trump had not explicitly stated how he would vote on the Florida ballot measure. Instead, the campaign emphasized that Trump was simply reiterating his belief that a six-week limit might be too restrictive and that more time could be necessary. This episode highlights the complex and often contentious nature of the abortion debate in the United States, particularly as it intersects with political figures who wield significant influence. The outcome of this ballot measure and the ongoing discussions surrounding it will likely have far-reaching implications for abortion rights and legislation in Florida and potentially across the nation. In Florida, including the state's existing six-week abortion ban. This ban, one of the strictest in the country, allows very little time for women to recognize their pregnancy and make a decision, leading to widespread debate and controversy. Recently,